Lord of the Rings Gollum is a stealth platformer where you take on the role of the titular character Gollum. Notice I didn't say hero, because Gollum is anything but. Developer Diatelic, however, had a wonderful idea. Take a beloved franchise and tell a new story that occurs during an iconic journey that all of us know so well. The Lord of the Rings Gollum takes place at the same time as the Fellowship of the Ring. While the Bagginses of the Shire are busy trying to take the One Ring to Mount Doom, Gollum is busy trying to retrieve the Ring for the all-seeing eye. There is plenty of room in Tolkien's wonderful world of Middle-earth for new stories, and I welcome the chance for Dadalic to fill in some of the blanks of what Gollum has been up to between the time we last saw him in the Misty Mountains during The Hobbit and when we meet up with him again in The Lord of the Rings. The character design of Gollum and the rest of the cast felt familiar, but at the same time did not resemble carbon copies of what we saw in the movies. The Uruks were menacing, and some of the more iconic enemies we see Small spoiler, but this takes place within the first five minutes of the game, like Shalob, were presented with an interesting spin. The War for the Ring isn't the only war that is taking place in the game. There is also a war over Smeagol's consciousness. Where we saw Smeagol and Gollum have a debate in the movies, we get to control it in-game. Players will be presented at times with options on how to respond to certain situations, either as Smeagol, the meek hobbit, or Gollum, the dark and twisted hobbit monster. Why do we have to go? Freilbad does nothing. You need to learn. I won't always be around to teach you. There's even a gameplay element that is added to this at times where you'll have to convince one personality to answer a certain way by answering questions from the other personality. Answer wrong three times and he'll say what he wants. Answer three of the questions correctly though and the other personality will go along with what you want to say. The most prominent gameplay mechanic is the platforming. Climbing your way to new heights, you'll set your sights on completing chapters. Scuffed walls, rope braided planks, and spinning platforms make unique challenges for Gollum to trapeze his way across. During certain sections, you'll have to sneak about the Uruks. You can do this through a mix of hiding in the shadows, climbing under tables, or scurrying through the bushes. You can even cling to the side of a ledge to get out of eyesight. By tossing rocks, you can knock out lights to increase the area of shadows to hide in and even distract your enemies. Once in a while, you'll even get lucky enough to sneak up behind an orc without a helmet and throttle them to death. It feels very satisfying to make your way through a room full of patrolling orcs by using your wits instead of brute force. What doesn't feel good though is getting stuck on a corner or trying to quickly dash from one shadow to the next, only for the game to lock up and you be discovered by that patrolman you were attempting to avoid. For as much promise as Lord of the Rings Gollum had, it is marred by technical difficulties. I reviewed the game on a PC built with a Ryzen 3900X, 32 gigs of RAM, and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3700. So this isn't cutting edge, but it's not a potato PC either. At this point, I'd say it's pretty similar to an average PC, and that's by design because that's what most people will be playing on. The game struggled to maintain 30 frames per second during cutscenes, and at times would turn into a slideshow. I turned the settings down to medium, had a resolution of 1920 by 1080, ray tracing off, DLSS on, and during most sections of the game, I could sustain over 60 FPS every few minutes, but there were times my frame rate would drop into the teens. I found myself dying to lockups and stutter more than to my own negligence. I wasn't just dropping frames, I was pouring them down the drain. It was so bad I couldn't play with a mouse and keyboard. I had to resort to using a controller because with a mouse and keyboard I would keep doing a 180 during performance hiccups. I did also try the game on the PS5, and I did not have as near bad of performance issues there, however there were still noticeable irregularities with the graphics. There is a day one patch on the way, but for a game that has already been as delayed as Lord of the Rings Gollum has been, these performance issues should have been ironed out before. This release a game as a performance mess and clean it later with patches is becoming a tired trend. Technical issues aside, Lord of the Rings Gollum filled a nice gap in the lore. The wall art throughout the game is engaging, the vistas feel epic, and the models look nice. The platforming felt good when the controls weren't bugging out from performance issues, and the story was engaging. Additionally, finding collectibles provided more context around the world that Tolkien created. Until they can get the performance issues ironed out, I can't recommend that you buy this game and give it a 5 for mediocre. If they can manage to get it cleaned up and performing well, I'd give it a 7 for good. I'm Rob, thanks for watching, and remember if you enjoyed this review or found value from it, to hit like and subscribe. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.